So here I am recording my bags here and here comes Chris meets Chris. What's that? Oh, it's new. It's, a, it's an iPhone? Oh, you mean this? Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's a mint camera. Our friends over in Hong Kong, Gary and the team. Give me a second. Give me a second. Look at, I want everyone to see how fresh Taki is right now. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Not bad for an old man. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Click, click, click. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I am not Big Head Taco. But if you've been watching this channel for a while, you may recognize me. My name is Chris. I uh, make videos with Take sometimes. And uh, today I'm testing out the Tamron 11-20. to Long story short, Take and I went out for lunch. We were talking about lenses, talking about vlogging. He said, well, I have the 11-20 to Tamron lens. Would you like to make a little vlog with it and show it to my viewers? I said, sure. So uh, that's what this video is. We're going to be talking about the 11 to 20 from Tamron and uh, specifically its use cases in kind of a general purpose vlogging sense. Now a quick disclaimer here, I know that this is not only for vlogging, but for the sake of this video, we're going to be focusing primarily on vlogging and just kind of general video with this lens. And the reason we're doing that is because the general vlogging lens has been the, the 16 to 35 2.8 from the big companies like Sony, Canon, and we never really had that option on Fujifilm until now. So that, that's really what I want to show in this video today, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Also, I should mention, for the purpose of this video, I shot everything at 2.8 because that's, I think, what everyone really wants to see. How does this lens perform at 2.8? So let's start the video now. For years, us Fuji vloggers patiently waited using our 10 to 24 f4s as vlogging lenses. And while the lens is actually pretty awesome, it leaves a lot to be desired in the tone, or blurry backgrounds, if you will. Why couldn't we have our 16 to 35 2.8? Why did we have to watch as all the other brands toted their fast ultra wides? When all hope seemed lost, Tamron finally came to the rescue. At first, I was skeptical. With Fuji, I'd gotten pretty used to shooting with pretty fast primes. I didn't want to go back to my old ways. But pretty quickly, this lens started to click. I threw Louie in the stroller, threw my Crocs on, and went about my morning. A lens like this is built for the unexpected. It's built to capture exactly what's around you, and not what isn't. That's what makes this lens a great little travel documentary lens. It's easy to throw it onto your camera and not really think about it. This is the 11 to 20 f 2.8 ultra wide zoom for X mount by Tamron. If you've been a Fuji shooter for a while, this is a very important lens in the arsenal. As far as build quality goes, it's that classic Tamron plastic, but it feels solid. The zoom is dampened nice and even throughout the focal range. However, it's not par focal, meaning when you zoom it, it will not keep focus. This is not the end of the world, but it would be awesome if it did. This lens was proudly designed in Japan. As you can see, that's pretty big, but it was made in China and the lens hood was made in the Philippines. It's probably more traveled than most of us. I did record some infield thoughts, um, kind of vlogging to the camera. The audio is a little bit messed up. I'm gonna do my best to, to clean that up so you can see it and hear it. But what I'm saying is not so much as important as how the frame looks while holding it. Like I was holding it just by the lens itself, no tripod. And this gives a pretty good example of what the stabilization looks like and what the wobble looks like. Now I'm shooting on an X-H2S, so it's gonna have a faster readout than most of their Fuji cameras. I didn't notice much of a wobble. For a lens that doesn't have image stabilization, I think it actually performs pretty, pretty well. I didn't miss it in my vlogging test. But the 11 mil is pretty nice. And at 2.8, you do get a little bit of that background blur. And the lens that I love the most for vlogging when I was doing it kind of daily more often was the 14 to 35 F4 from Canon. That was my all-time favorite lens. I didn't feel like you needed the 2.8, but for APS-C, you definitely need 
the 2.8 if you want to have any sort of separation. Hey, Budzo. Hey, my guy. Are you the cat that jumped into Jenny's car that one time? Hello. Hello. What a beautiful cat. What a gorgeous color you are. But as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted from that cat. This is kind of that lens for Fuji. So, when I used to vlog with Fujifilm, the biggest setback was that there was no wide 2.8 lens. So to be able to have this in the arsenal now is kind of the last lens that Fujifilm was missing. I think this really is the sweet spot for an ultra wide zoom. At the 11, you're getting a wide enough view that you can get those establishing shots. You're getting that ultra wide 16 mil, 15 and a half field of view for vlogging. It's, it's far enough any wider than that and you're gonna get quite distorted. And the 20 mil on the long end gives you kind of just a tad more than a 28. Now, if you watched my last video on my channel, you'll know how much I love the 28. So to me, 11 to 20 is perfect. I'm okay with the compromise from the 10 to 24, but this is a nice compact little lens. I hope you enjoyed this quick kind of example of the 11 to 20 2.8 in a vlogging context. Um, and thank you for letting me take over the channel for a couple of minutes. If you enjoyed this type of video and you enjoyed watching my face, then please comment below and uh, maybe we'll do this more often. Take, thank you for letting me uh, steal your, your channel for a second. And uh, I will see you all on the next video. Happy shooting. Click, click, click.